All right, everybody, welcome to the Comic Wrestling Podcast. This is the Wrestling Ring. I'm your host, Deadly Dave, and with me, as always, is the wild card, Ace Williams. This is our last Wrestling Ring of 2019. So sad. It really is. It's very sad. What am I going to do? We have no lives. What are we going to do? I really don't. All I do, I, I just, I make pickles. I don't have anything better to do other than this podcast. <laughs> But today we're going to talk about independent wrestling. More independent wrestling. More specific two companies that we've really enjoyed over the years, which is CTWE, which is no longer in business, unfortunately, and Northeast Wrestling, which is going very strong. I'm not sure. But uh, the first one we went to was at the Fort Edward High School in 2010. To think that we've been going yeah, to these for... Ago. Yeah, it's crazy. But, of course, with it being Hacksaw's home area in the Glens Falls area, he was the headliner against Jaleel Salam, who we only saw a couple times. Yeah, they. when we first started going to the shows, I thought he was like a big deal because they just kind of made him seem like he was, and then he never was. He seemed like he was the big heel of the whole company, and he just... Wasn't. They used him for WrestleFest that year, and that was pretty much it. Yeah, exactly. But we saw... Um, Roxy and the midget short sleeve Samson mm -hmm. against uh, Angelina Love and Rob Echoes, who went on to become Robbie E. Robbie E. In TNA, fist pumping. Um, first time seeing Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, who wrestled each other. Yeah, actually, that's true. Mike Bennett, not Mike Canellis, that stupid bullshit. Um, Tommaso Ciampa wrestled on that show as well. Tommaso Ciampa! <laughs> and one of your favorites, Ron Zombie. I was going to wear that shirt, but then I said, no, 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 wear the CTWE shit. <laughs> and of Still course, fits. Brian Anthony and Bull Dread, two of my favorites. Brian Anthony, we were like on his bandwagon for the longest time, and then he just didn't care about us anymore, it felt. Yeah, Bull Dread's always been a good friend, though. He's always been really cool. Sorry if people are watching this. I don't want to give you a crotch shot, but I am. <laughs> 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 but we've always had a lot of fun at Northeast Wrestling. Like, met so many stars. Never have I ever, ever met a star there. <laughs> Who have we met through, throughout the years at Northeast Wrestling events, Dave? Uh, fucking Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, brother! The Ultimate Warrior, Roddy Piper. We were at this show right here, Wrestling Under the Stars, Northeast Wrestling's first... Wrestling Under the Stars event, and they pulled out all the stops when they had Hulk Hogan and Roddy Roddy Piper in ring for the first time ever that I have been aware of outside of the WWE. Since, like, WrestleMania 19, I believe. Right. Yeah. Long fucking time, and we were front row for that, and it was absolutely amazing to be part of that history. Hogan signed for about five hours. Piper yelled at me. <laughs> Because I was telling him I loved him wearing a Hogan shirt. I and it, it rained halfway through the show and they still kept the show going. And Gold Dust. Gold Dust. Gold Dust gave me his glove. Lito, which was cool. Lito was there. Very awesome time at this show. We've tried to go to every single one of these Wrestling Under the Stars. We missed three. We, we missed a couple, yeah. And it sucks because Kevin Owens was at that one. And Kevin Steen. I like Kevin Steen. Yeah. But... <laughs> It's, it's, it is what it is. But we've seen up and coming people like like Cedric Alexander, Tommaso Ciampa, yeah, Ciampa, yeah. TK O'Ryan, yeah. Vinny Marseglia, even Taven, Taven. The, point, the point that he's gotten to, yeah. Uh, Eddie Edwards, we saw Adam come Cole. There we've seen Adam Cole. Adam Cole. Adam Page. Yeah, that's true, yeah. But yeah. he was just like a little John Deere looking redneck. Yep. Um, Before he was doing cowboy shit. Who else? Who else are we? We actually, we were, I'm jumping ahead, I'm going to CTWE yeah. real quick, yeah. but Sasha Banks, Yeah, we were at her very last yeah. show at that, we'll get into that, but we were at that, her very last indie show. Yeah, um, um, Mia Yim. Mia Yim, oh my god, I used to, oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, when she would come out at the shows, I used to be like, oh Mia Yim, because <laughs> she is so sexy. I like her a lot. Um... God, she's a babe. <laughs> what did you have to say her name for? <laughs> no, I'm like all like, what, what, wrestling? Wrestling? I mean, we've even seen like Romeo Roselli, who used to be in the Heartthrobs. Mm -hmm. you know, whoa, 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 whoa. 
But one that I really like that he's not a big name. He's, I mean, unless you see him on the indies, is the Man Scout Jake Manning. I thought the character of an, just a, an adult fucking Boy Scout... Man Scout, damn it! He's just... It was such an entertaining character. And he would go and he would look at the... Yeah, you know, his the, little Man the Scout book. Yeah, exactly. And he would look at it and he would tell the ref no punching, no eye gouging, and just... It, it was, was just so, such a great heel character. And it was a good gimmick. Yeah. It worked. It had real energy behind it because it was like this... This shouldn't be a thing, but it really is. Like, this is cool. And the crowd starting st- started to get behind it, too. Like, they which, started getting speaking popular. Speaking of him, with what's coming up for this man? He's doing a loser, or if he loses the next match with Brian Anthony, he his career in Northeast Wrestling is over. If he wins, he gets Brian Anthony's crown as king. King? Yeah. Would this be his first ever match he won? No, he won the, uh, the over-the-top uh, oh, rumble that yeah. they did. He eliminated Anthony from it, so okay. so I think that's what that's where they're going with it. Well, <laughs> but we've seen him. He was on such a he was he lost every match he was ever in. Yeah, that's and, why you know, I say so, that. Yeah, but I, I think it's a, a, an interesting character like that has been a constant in the whole thing, and yeah, I think yeah. that's really good. And he is he's he is entertaining. Uh, because I just watched WrestleFest twenty last night with uh. L Buck Barber Max that, that was Mortal. a re- that was a really good time. That wasn't a great show. Well, uh who what the fuck were we just saying? I got sidetracked real quick. Jake Manning. Yeah. He had a match with Jerry the King Lawler, which featured Mick Foley in the corner of uh Lawler and You egg sucking dog <laughs> Um Terry Funk in the corner. Who fucking went all out in that match when he had no need to. No, but it sold it, and it was oh, amazing. Yeah. We were front row for it. Um, I I got a personal birthday, like, little, you know, to do from him, because it was around my birthday, and it was just amazing to get a happy birthday from Terry Funk. What did Cornette say about you? I had a dick for a nose. <laughs> Stone Cold Steven was with us at that show. He as well. was, and yep. I had a dick for a nose. I did, <laughs> and you got to see my bald spot through the entire fucking show. Through most of the, it, the yeah. hard camera was right behind my fucking head. Oh, my whole bald spot was showing through <laughs> most of it. I look really, really bald when I shave my head, and I have no facial hair. I like it, it sense the baldness even more. It's weird, but that that was a really good time. I really enjoyed going to that show, and it it truly is one of my personal favorites because I mean, I'm on the case. Yeah, I'm right there on the cover. I'm right there on the DVD. Um, I just, I love that because I'm not on shit and this is like the only thing I'm ever on. It is a lot of fun to go back and watch them and see how many, you know, shots we are in. Oh yeah. Oh hell yeah. Like when Taven wrestled Brian Anthony in the steel cage, Taven comes over and grabs one of our signs because we had the Brian Anthony signs Mm -hmm. and Anthony held one of them up as he was leaving the ring too. Just, just that kind of interaction is fucking great. Exactly. And to have it on DVD, cause like this is so fresh in my head. I'm just thinking Yeah. when Terry Funk came out, we're standing in front row. I'm standing there with my Funk U university shirt and I'm holding over the railing and I haven't seen this in so long that I didn't remember it. That when Terry Funk came out, he's, you know, yelling already. He's already in character. And he points over and he starts yelling over to me. Like, he gets it or whatever he's saying. And then they they point the camera over and I'm standing there holding it. It's like, to me, as a wrestling fan, and I mean no disrespect for, to the indie guys, but to have never seen Terry Funk at a show ever, this is my first time ever seeing him live, to have a moment on DVD... That it's like he's pointing at me. They acknowledged me. Like to me, my ego is through the roof. Yeah. It's like Terry Funk is fucking. Like I've got it on DVD where Jerry Lawler's yelling at me, <laughs> where Piper's yelling at me, where Terry Funk's yelling to me. And at the end of this, I never forgot it. I'm looking up at Rey Mysterio. He's looking down at me, and I'm yelling at him. I'm like, "You are a tiny little pedo. You suck." I hate you, I don't like you, (laughs) and in this DVD, you don't see me yelling, but you see him yelling back at me, I've been doing it 25 years, baby, and then he he says something else, I don't remember, and then the camera pans off of him, and you can see you looking over at me, laughing, because your face is all red. One thing I like that that I remember is when we met MVP at WrestleFest the one time, he was signing my autograph, and... 
I said to him, the match with you and Matt Hardy is a main event that should have happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And when he did his in-ring promo that night, he fucking said he that. He said that. He did. And that, that was, true. to me, I was like, he fucking said what I said it's to like, him. It's like, you didn't like, plan on saying that. Yep. You just said that because you know the fans want that. Exactly. Yeah. And this is it right here on DVD. And we've seen some great matches at WrestleFest, like the tables match with, or the ladder match with Sabu in it. Right, five-man five man five man grab for the gold ladder match featuring Hale Collins, Vic Delicious, Sabu, Ryan McBride, Tommaso Ciampa. Ryan McBride, you don't hear anything about that guy. He, he guess he does something with, like, Maryland Championship Wrestling. Never but, heard of it. No. <laughs> Never heard of but it. But Sabu's just throwing fucking chairs at people. Exactly. And the ladders are breaking. And I mean... One of the main events. This is an indie show, yeah. folks. One of I don't know if it was the main. It probably was the main event. Was MVP versus Matt Hardy. Yep. Like that was our main event, and that was right after MVP had left too. Right. He was fresh off the yep. boat. But like you said earlier, we met Ultimate Warrior at one of these shows. You will not been... find it on DVD because they got into a thing with him about using his likeness on the DVD, so... I'm trying to think what show it was. It was oh. WrestleFest, I want to say 16, but... I want to say that one. This one right here? Yeah. Oh, that seems about right, because Morrison and Molina were on that one. Yep. WrestleFest 16, they don't even say with an appearance of Ultimate Warrior on it. Because I don't even think they could use his... Know, or whatever. I think if you go on YouTube, you can see the in-ring promo that oh, Warrior probably. did, like a fan video of it, but yeah, they weren't allowed to use his likeness on it, so. But that was an amazing experience, just meeting him and yeah, he was so nice. And I don't know if you can see it up there, It's but there's the picture from the day we met him. He was so nice. He had one of his duster jackets on, and he had the full face paint. Mm -hmm. You know, it was great. It, I wish it was on DVD, though, just so we can relive seeing it. Not so much so I can be like, oh, I was there. Just so I can be like, oh, that's what it looked like when he came out and everything. Because it was awesome yeah. to be in the same energy as the Ultimate Warrior. Yep. Um, we literally, we have met so many names through this company. And not even just because they bring in names, but their wrestling is good. Yeah. I would honestly say in the last couple of shows we went to, very predictable matches. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's like they've got the people in the building, so it just, you know... I mean, we haven't gone to any in the past, you know, really the past couple of years, so... Right. You know, they've been bringing in a lot of different indie guys, but still, I mean... But we've seen, oh my god, some of the shit we've seen. We've seen two two out of the three matches between Cody Rhodes and Kurt Angle. One of them is Steel Cage. Right. Um, we've seen Jushin Thunder Liger against Jeff Hardy... And we got free pictures with him because mm -hmm. of it. We just kind of snuck down. Yep. Um, we've seen people like Dijak. Yeah. In Northeast Hansen. Wrestling. Hansen. Hansen. Um, the Young Bucks. Yep. Even though you don't like them still, it's it's no. really cool that we've, you know. Um, Colt like, Cabana. Yeah. Did we, we met Colt Cabana, yep. right? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah, we did. Samoa Joe. Samoa Joey. Yep. I mean, Matt. Cowboy Hart Bob Orton. Yeah. Like, that's the, awesome. The Brooklyn Brawler. The Brooklyn Brawler. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And he was the special guest referee that night. So awesome. The yeah. people we have met. Booker Ryback. Ryback. Ryback, yeah. <sighs> Christian and Corey Graves. Jack Swagger. Swagger was a fucking great. The Kingdom. Yeah, we did We did a five-second pose with the Kingdom. With the which, Kingdom. And this I is all through have, Northeast yeah. Wrestling. And we cannot, we cannot not talk about this company and not give the shout out to Michael Lombardi. Yeah, he's been really cool to us. He always gave us good accommodation. Like yeah. he just was nice, just friendly to us because he knew we were fans or whatever. Um I don't know his wife's name, but she's so nice too. Yeah, she gave us free well, she gave me a free sign and made you pay for one, but still Hey, you gotta pay for the good shit. But know? they they're good at setting up their well a lot of times up their meet and greets so you can get to who you need to get mm -hmm. to and stuff like that. You know, I, I we, yeah, we've met so many people. The Boogie so Man, many people. Boogie AJ Man. Styles, yep. Alberto, uh, Bret Hart, Bret Hart, Sonny, Sonny yep. Um, John Matt, Morrison was going through Matt, the Matt Hardy and Jerry Lawler have been at most of them. <laughs> Sergeant Slaughter, yep. Mickey James, Alberto Del Rio, Shelton Benjamin, and Daniel Bryan. We saw Daniel Bryan's last independent That's show true. while he was under contract to WWE. Yep. As the U.S. champion. Yeah, it was he cool. He was fulfilling his commitments. It was cool. That was fucking great. Carlito. Yeah. Finley. 
uh, Great Khali, the Godfather. Oh, great yeah, it wasn't that great, but... <laughs> Uh, there it is, right here, actually. Brass yeah. City Brawl. Velvet Sky, Angelina Love. Uh, we've seen Piper's Pits yeah. at these shows, which Abyss. is great. Abyss! Sammy Callahan, Luke Robinson. Oh, Rikishi, yeah, the Godfather. The Hurricane. The Hurricane! <laughs> dun, dun, uh, Ribby Paul and Nash. Yeah. Ribby Sky, who's married to fucking Matt Hardy. Cody Hall. We've seen Cody Hall. Yep. He fucked up his father's finishing move a few times, but we saw him. I didn't realize how many loves of that. Yeah, dude, we, we've been to so many of them. Damn. But, um, we met Bandito Jr., who is a referee for NXT right now. That does nothing for me. <laughs> but Mandy Leone, who is in Ring of Honor right now. I think the fact that we've met Dijak and he's in NXT and he's doing so well is, is fucking great. Well, doing so well isn't doing anything if you're not on TV. I mean, is he on NXT yeah. TV? Yeah. What's he doing? Like, He's been in a big feud with Keith Lee. Okay. He was part of the War Games match, too. Oh, all right, War good. Yeah, because yeah, I haven't seen any fucking spark of any light from him at all, so I'm glad actually to hear <laughs> shit. But we, uh, Deanna Perrazzo, who, was, uh, who is in NXT now, just... Jerry Lawler. We've seen Jerry Lawler sleeping in his fucking car. That's true. It, uh, King. Or not King. We met JR. Yeah. Um, it, it, a lot of them. Didn't yeah. It? Spent a lot of fucking money. <laughs> yeah. Paul London. Yeah, with his cookie promo. That was funny. <laughs> I wish they would do more stuff like that on their DVDs. They don't yeah. seem to do that anymore. But he, I, when I had a trading card with him and... Kendrick on it, and he was like, "Can I sign over Kendrick's face?" I was like, "You sign whatever the fuck sure, you want, man. man." Yep. Pipe. I mean, we've met. We have. We've met so many people through that. Mean Gene. Just, fucking Mean Gene. Oh, you did. Oh, that's right. You didn't. You did, couldn't go to that one. Um, that's right. Just so cool though, just to know. Because as a kid, I always thought you had to go to WWE. Yeah. To see these people, to meet these people, and then even then, that's a stretch. Yeah. To know that we went to an independent show, paid top dollar, 20 bucks maybe, to get into the show, and then whatever we paid to meet whoever we wanted to meet at our own discretion. But the idea of it is like, my God, I can't believe Sergeant Slaughter's right there. Yeah. Like, fucking Mr. Anderson and Booker yeah. T. And it, it just... Exactly. And and Christian didn't even wrestle, but just to fucking meet him, you know? Yep. Yep. The boogeyman fucking ran through the crowd and just scared the shit out of people. Which, that's the way you should use a talent like that. Yeah. Exactly like that. I mean, we met Matt Stryker, which was cool. Um, Jeff Hardy was a, a guest referee for a Ron Zombie match mm -hmm. with Brian Anthony. It was a casket match. Yep. We've seen that. Yeah, Northeast Wrestling has been... I don't know how we didn't hear of them before. Yeah. I, I really don't know how they've been around 20 years, and I've never heard of them until 10 years ago. Um, yeah, we've met Ric Flair through them. Jim Neidhart, who wasn't too exciting, but it was still cool to know. <laughs> yeah. We met both of the members of the Hart Foundation. They, Teddy Long and IRS. Yeah. yeah. It's, and, and I love the fact that we've met Dijak, who was an up-and-comer. Tommaso Ciampa. We didn't know what the fuck his character was, but... You know, his matches were good. and Especially when you see and you know all these independent wrestlers that are all over the world. And literally, there is a crop of them from that company that we have seen that have been plucked. Yeah. And Just it's the kingdom cool. alone. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, because when we were watching WrestleFest 20 last night, I was telling him Vinny Marseglia, Marseglia has been like... A chameleon. He's just gone through so many different little changes. He's like, as Jeff Hardy for a yeah, while. Yeah, and I go, and now he's the horror king, and he's finally found his niche. And I go, and it's just, I love it. I, I love the character. Um, Taven's one that's always been really cool to us. Yeah, Taven's a nice He's always he's recognized nice us and stood and talked with us and shit. And I remember, like, seeing him at the first show, and I did, I thought to myself, like, this guy, he's like the standout guy here. Yeah. Him and Anthony. I figured Anthony would would have too, but... I can't believe Anthony hasn't gone anywhere yet, honestly. Yeah. I really cannot believe that. Um, he's good as a heel or a babyface, like, you know. And he's got a look. Yeah. He's got a look. I'm going to try, try to see real quick. <laughs> you keep going on. I want to see if I can find um, It's just been... We've got, we went to so many all at once. We just kept going and going and going because it was... The shows were really good, and... They did storylines. Like, Taven and Brian Anthony had storylines for a while. 
it, it all kind it all went together. It's true. We saw George Animal Steel almost die. Yeah, we did. That was scary, actually. Matt Taven did a moonsault off the top rope to the floor, and George the Animal Steel didn't know it was coming, and Taven landed right on his shoulder and knocked him down. It looked awful. It, it we was, were, it we was were pretty close to it, and it looked pretty bad. But we've like guys like Kurt Adonis, who have always been entertaining, and and some of the CTWE guys were even there that we didn't know at the time they were like Joey Bricko and Jay mm -hmm. Busta and stuff like that it was I remember Joey Bricko and it might have been Frankie Arion before we even knew who the fuck he was two little guys I know one of them was Bricko and Ron Zombie just came right yep. out and beat the shit out of him with a chair yep that's how I always thought that was really freaking great cause it's like that, yeah that I didn't expect that to happen I'm trying to find a certain match the only the only thing is a lot of times, the major star always wins. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which I get because you want to send the crowd home happy, but it would have been nice if sometimes the, the just... big stars took a loss every once in a while. But... Yeah, that is one of my issues. And I like Jerry Lawler, but seeing him all the time got old because it was the same the match. Same shit. He was just ta walk and talk for the first exactly. five minutes. Exactly. Work and... the crowd up and pretend to go to, you know, throw a punch and get the off... Or, you know, get the upper hand on the guy by giving him a drop kick and then taunting him. And then the other guy playing possum. It was good when him and Luke Robinson did it. Yeah. Because it just was like, all right, they're both working the crowd. But then it just became, oh, this is the gimmick. And his matches with Dreamer were good because they had the backstory with all the ECW they did. shit. You know? And anything with Dreamer in it, to me, personally, is great. But, yeah, getting to meet Piper and knowing he's no longer here. And Ultimate yeah. Warrior and... No one we met Hogan, like, how many, other than the signings that he's done in his shop the past couple of years, I have never seen him do a Comic-Con or anything like that. So then to know that we went to an indie show and he was there and he yeah, signed exactly. for that long. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, and to hear him call me brother and it just... It, right, when I know. look up here and I see that picture of me standing next to Hulk Hogan, it's like, I... I've, you know, we've met so many fucking people. <laughs> Hulk Hogan is beyond the celebrity. Yeah. He is beyond... It'd be. I don't like The Rock, but it'd be like if I met The Rock. You are beyond the celebrity now. You have almost transcended to a god. Yeah, he's, a, house, he's a household name. Like, if, if somebody doesn't know anything about wrestling, they know who he is. Right. And they know that he. that's what he does. So to know standing next to Hogan, it's like... I'm standing next to God, essentially. I don't mean that in a blasphemous way. Yeah. It's just, you are above the profession that made you. You are above the idea of what a celebrity is. You have literally transcended to a timeless entity, in my opinion. Like, like The Rock. They're both so above and beyond what a celebrity status means because yeah. they're such an iconic-looking figure. And... I don't know, just, like I said, looking next to him, standing next to him in a picture, it's just like, that's so surreal. Yeah. That's so surreal. Like, thinking about, oh, man, when I met, what's his name, um, Sergeant Slaughter, and he just threw me in the Cobra Clutch. Yep. Like, oh, that's a fucking, that's a cool moment, but it doesn't make me stop and be like, wow, that happened. Yeah. Like, that, that picture does. Every time I look at it, I'm like, dude, like, that's, that's a real picture. I'm standing next to Hulk. Hogan. Yeah, and seeing him and Piper in the ring doing that face-off. And they didn't really do... They stared at each other, kind of like The Rock and, and Hogan, Hogan did. You know, just stared, and, and Piper grabbed a chair. Yep. And you thought they were gonna... You know, it was just... It was so surreal. It yep. was great. I have a picture of that, actually, of them just standing there staring at each other while he's holding the chair. I think, uh, the, the time we met Flair and we did the Four Horsemen, you, me, and Mike. Yeah, that, that one, that's yeah. one of my favorite experiences, without a doubt. Yeah, it was a good one. I want to get another fourth picture inflated to an 8x10 and put it up in that corner. Because I got me and the Nasty Boys, me and Warrior, and then us with Flair. Woo! <laughs> but, um, Brass City Brawl 2, I'm not going to go into detail of what it was. It was a pretty good show from what I'm looking at. Pretty decent. Uh, new title match in a steel cage, Matt Taven and Brian Anthony. But I wanted to just say it before I forgot. I got this really cool piece of table. It's a big chunk. Nice trophy piece. I just bet right over and took it. <laughs> so I don't care. Is that how it happened or did I ask somebody for it? I don't know. I think you grabbed it. I think I, did, I grabbed one. I, I, I just leaned right over and, and took it. Broke it right <laughs> off. 
But this was from a Waterbury Street Fight match with Ron Zombie and Bull Dread. Big, thick piece of cable. Yeah. It's... They were right in front of us when it happened. Ron Zombie gave a DDT to Bull Dread right through the fucking table, and I thought he was dead. Yeah. That snap, crunch, pop, crack sounded so bad. Um, And then at separate shows, I met both of them and had them sign this because I just think this is awesome, and I've had this since... Jesus, almost 10 years now. Yeah. Wow. And Since I've, 2011, I've had this. And I have one from a ladder match, a five-way ladder match that featured Matt Hardy. Mm. And I have it signed by all the participants in that match as well. Which were? Brian Anthony, Caleb Conley, Adam Page, Matt Hardy, and... Fuck, I can't remember who else was in it. But... I had Adam Page sign it earlier this year. Was it Lucas Sharp? Lucas Sharp, yes. And I had him sign it at the CTWE show. So I've got it autographed by everybody in the match, which yeah. is really fucking cool. That is cool. And I it was a huge piece of table. It was a good too. piece of table. It's probably a good three feet tall. And they were just taking down the ring and they were leaving the pieces of table on the floor and just grabbed it. Yep. And brought it out to the car. I love this shape just because it's so easy Yeah. to display somewhere and prop it. I wish there was another participant in the match to film that. <laughs> yeah. But but it's it's cool cuz those are two guys that we've really enjoyed. Yeah, you know. Dread's always been really nice to us and Ron Zombie is such a cool character. I like it. I do. But that was my own like little personal thing I wanted to add in there. Yeah. Before I and out. and you've you've almost made girls cry talking about Rey Mysterio and That's true. We're going to a quick <laughs> story. We were standing out in front of a show. I don't know what show it was, but yeah. we were standing out in front of it and Dave and I I would not say we're judgmental people, <laughs> but we will definitely pass judgment <laughs> on a specific style of fan in yeah. of wrestling. And by that, I give a quick example before I get into the story. The same group of people, there was a guy standing with this group, and he, I think the only ECW guy that was going to be there was Tommy Dreamer. Yeah. And this guy brought the 2013... Was that the year? That, that they did that belt? Yeah, yeah. Something like that? Yep. When ECW died for the final time, they had the big silver, shitty, fucking, like, flaming Phoenix eagle-looking belt. Yeah. This guy brings the belt there to have Tommy Dreamer sign it. Now, I understand Dreamer held that shitty toy, but me as a nostalgic ECW fan who owns the original title, who's had Dreamer sign it, who's I got Sabu, Raven, Sandman, Just Incredible, Shane Douglas... And Terry Funk, all on my belt. Like, to me, if you're not bringing that for them to sign, don't bring anything yeah. like that unless it's something legit. So I, that's what I judge. I judge little moments like that of like, really, like, and you're a fan, and you're gonna bring that thing. Like, I could, I could get having Matt Hardy sign it because that Jack was a big, Swagger. Yeah, that was a big milestone in Hardy's career. But you know? for someone personally to have Dreamer, yeah, like, just buy an eight by ten off of him, man. Yeah. Like, I'm sure he'd appreciate that more, honestly. Yep. Because when I met Dreamer to have him sign my ECW title, you can even attest to this. We're standing in line. Tommy Dreamer is signing my ECW title. He thanks me very much for it, which was was nice that he was thanking me for bringing the, like, that title. He took me, skipped a bunch of fucking people in line, brought my title all the way down to Sabu and had Sabu sign that for me for free. Yep. Fucking awesome. Like... I've never had a bad experience meeting Tommy Dreamer. And that's the stuff ever. that you'll always remember. Always. Always, yeah. always, always. Tommy Dreamer is one of the nicest human beings on this fucking I don't even planet. think he charges for autographs. I think he did for pictures, but I don't think he did for autographs. I don't autographs. know if he did either. Because he signed my kendo stick for free as well. Yeah? Yep, when He's we went to big time wrestling. Super, super nice guy. But, uh, so, this group of people, there was the two guys, the one dipshit with the belt, and then another guy that was probably just a dipshit too. And then there was a girl. And Dave and I, we kind of, we, I, I try hard. I know he tries hard, but it's, he, get, he gets pulled into a tractor beam way more easier yeah, than I do. I give off a pheromone for stupid people for some reason. We try not to engage in conversation unless 
it's worth it. I'll just yeah. leave it at that. And occasionally, there are good people that there we are. Actually there talk absolutely to. are. I'm not going to discredit that. But then, majority rules, there are <laughs> less oxygen infused human beings that are rambling the nonsense of <laughs> idiocracy to yeah. the finest. Yep. I don't remember what the girl really was saying. I just remember her saying she was a fan of Rey Mysterio. Yep. That's all it really was. And I want to quote myself, and I said something along the lines of, I didn't. I don't think I shot Mysterio down saying I personally hate him, but I said, I don't think you should hold the title if it weighs more than you. <laughs> yep. I think it was something along those yeah. lines. Yep. This girl... Her reaction was like, I had just raped her mother, and yeah. she was there to watch the whole thing. Yep. Like, I might be being dramatic, but she was, like, her eyes looked like they were swelling. Yeah. She, she looked like she was on the cusp of, ah, why? <laughs> like, her whole world had ended. Yep. And it brought joy to me, Dave. <laughs> I know it did, because... Because we, we love wrestling. We do. But to get that, it just... And Especially we get passionate about, about shit. Yeah. But to me, and I want to defend you in the same breath, we get passionate about logistical things. Yeah. Lo yeah. Logical, not logistical. Logical things. Like, to me, here's a logical thing. Undertaker losing to WrestleMania at Brock Lesnar makes sense. You're building Brock Lesnar up because he's going to be, like, the man, essentially. Undertaker would not have said yes to that if he did not want to do it. Yeah. That's my first and foremost defense. But Lesnar, to me, is the only guy in professional wrestling with how legitimate they make Undertaker. Lesnar's the only guy that would legitimately, in a fake world, be the guy to end it. Yeah. They constantly, for like decades, said Undertaker is the best pure striker in the WWE, right? Yeah. I want to believe that. So who better to beat him? A UFC legitimate heavyweight champion. That's my defense. And a guy that he's had huge feuds with in the past. Exactly. Yep. That's my defense and I stick to it. A non-logical thing that I got pissed off about <laughs> is Roman Reigns beating him. Yeah. There's no reason for that. Well, it's because Vince McMahon has a hard on for somebody. Exactly. And it, that's still a logical thing to get mad at because it's evident that that's just stupid. To get upset and have a temper tantrum because somebody says Rey Mysterio should never have been world champion because he's not heavy enough. That's just silly. Yeah. And I still believe that because if they wanted that to be the case, I understand why Mysterio got it because Eddie Guerrero died. Let's call it what it is. Yeah, yeah, you can't dispute that. I'm sorry. Let's just call it what it is, right? You should have made it a point that Mysterio was bulking up in weight. Yeah. Say that throughout the weeks. Say Mysterio is fighting for the WWE Championship in the honor of Eddie Guerrero, so he is massing on weight. Because if you're telling me there is a weight system in that company, and a cruiserweight can now be a world heavyweight champion, then there's no such thing as a cruiserweight. Yeah. No such thing as a cruiserweight. What is 205 Live? It's a reprogression of what Mysterio brought to the table with the cruiserweights. And it just cuts the idea of, to me, or it only supports the idea of you only gave it to him because of Eddie. Yeah. You didn't give it to him because you thought cruiserweights were making an impact. Why didn't you give it to Chavo? He was closer to Eddie. He, uh, literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ, you could have brought in Gory... Have the, get, I don't even Chavo know. Chavo Classic, give it to right. him. Right, anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, but for a fan to just go... Could have given it to Benoit that year. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, for a fan to get pissy was funny. But we've heard some stupid shit while we've been standing in line. Oh, really dumb in, shit. And it's just... And you, you just want to walk away, but you can't because you're in fucking line. You exactly. Just, you know, you, you, and you want to turn around and be like... Really? Yeah, you want to be like, you dumb fuck, shut up. But I don't understand how a majority of people in line, like, think the same way. Yeah. Or don't think differently to say, well, that's not correct. They go along with it. Yep. It's like, no, man, John Cena's not a 21-time world heavyweight champion. Why are you saying that? I'm making this up. <laughs> I can't really think of a moment. And then someone, yeah, he's like the best. It's like, 
How are you a wrestling fan and you <laughs> say that? Like, I don't... Yeah. I don't get it. Or, the, or they'll walk in and they'll be like, oh, well, I can't believe I've got to pay for autographs. Have you ever gone to any event where right. a star is? We, you know... That has happened a, major, a good amount of times where we've gone to a show and there's someone in front of us or behind us and they'll lean in and they'll say, do you know, do you know how much it is for an autograph? Oh, I have no idea. Probably like 40 bucks. Oh, really? Like, I only brought like 10. Yeah. Okay, first of all, what I want to say to all those people is, you heard about the show, right? <laughs> you heard about the show. So you're aware of the show. Yep. You had to go online, right? You had to go to the website to buy a ticket. You didn't happen to see... Oh, you did. You did happen to see who was going to be here because you brought something for them to sign. You didn't happen to see it say there's a price to it? Yeah. <coughs> well, I shouldn't have to pay to get a picture, just a picture with them. Well, fuck you, dude. Maybe if Seriously. you're lucky, that guy won't charge you for a picture. Yeah. I made the conscious decision when we went to... We didn't go out of our way to meet Jay Lethal. We were at a convention, a Hall of Fame, and Jay Lethal was there. I wanted to meet him. Then he dropped down. He was like 30 bucks for a picture. Ah, uh -uh, guy. Yep. Yeah, I get my thirty bucks for a picture. You weren't even a big deal yet at that point. Like you were black machismo, but you weren't like Ric Flair. And you, ha you weren't yeah. Jay Lethal that you have become. Like you were still like just black machismo. I knew of you because I watched TNA a little bit, not because it's like, oh man, there's the machismo. Yep. Um, and there's very few that I've regretted meeting there. I mean, Kali comes to mind, but they've all been pretty good experiences, really. Kali, I don't really regret meeting him, because I'm glad I got to say I did. I just wish he was, like, it just, he stood up. That's the only thing I yeah. wanted, was him to be standing up in the picture. So I could have a height difference. Yeah. And be like, oh, look how big he is. Uh, same with Mysterio. You motherfucking midget motherfucker. You're four foot two, and you're gonna sit down in your picture? Yeah. Stand the fuck up, man. Yeah. Like, like I can understand Nash, who's had like fifteen thousand knee surgeries, not getting up for every picture. Exactly. But yeah, Mysterio, you're fucking t stand up, asshole. Yep. I don't regret meeting you because you are a legend. You've contributed a lot to the company that I love. But I don't like you. I've never liked Mysterio. I never will. Yep. Um. I'm trying oh my god. And then you've got guys like Anderson who was like yelling in your face in the picture. Oh, so cool. You didn't ask him to do that. You no, know what I, I mean? Like it was cool. And he signed my autograph both Mr. Kennedy dot 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 Kennedy and then Mr. Anderson yeah, dot, 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 dot Anderson, too, yep. which I was like, oh that's so neat. And like I had the, the MVP necklace on that WWE had sold mm -hmm. and mine was bigger than the MVPs. MVPs. And it just that interaction of comparing and shit, you know, it just little shit. Yeah, it the experiences, that, that little stuff that you won't forget. Uh -huh. And there are matches that we'll never forget, too. But, you know, it, it's... I remember... Uh, I think it was... <laughs> the show was sunny. What the fuck it was? <laughs> Probably in my other pile now. Um, yeah. I think it was the Spring Slam one. Right? Yeah, that's what it was, too. We've been to so many. This one here, I brought a sign for Ron Zombie. It was a yellow paper sign. It just had Ron Zombie on one side, and then on the other side, it said Sabu and all barbed wire and shit. So I'm standing there, and the match was a four-way table elimination match with Sabu, Vic Delicious, Ryan McBride, and Ron Zombie. So I'm holding the paper sign up, and Ron Zombie comes over with Sabu and just slams his head into the paper sign. Yeah. It didn't do anything. It did not hurt him one bit. I still have the sign. But it was so cool to be like, oh man, I wish I had a weapon. They would have used it. Yeah. Like, that's a cool moment to me. Like, the, I love ECW so much. And that, like, independent wrestling was my ECW. Yeah. And I got to see a lot of really fucking crazy shit. Uh, Vic Delicious and Hale Collins and their, their street fight. Their street fight. Yeah. Uh, anything with Sabu and it was really cool. We got to see like a, a good amount of shows with him in it for a nice period of time. Yeah. Um, I don't for, know. I, for me, I like, I, I know he's not Brian Anthony, he's not like a big star, but when we came into the show and I saw that he had the dog tags uh -huh. and his dog tag had some of my signs on it. Yep. 
Like, to know that a wrestler put my sign on his merchandise Even is the fucking shirt. amazing. Yeah. Even the shirt you had made up, or yeah. the I want you for the Anthony R. Yeah, it was Uncle's, Uncle Sam, you know, doing the point. Mm-hmm. I want, and he en- ended up doing that, but with him wearing the Uncle Sam hat. Right. I was Which like, is cool. Yeah. And you can edit the video back yeah, together? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. We're having technical difficulties, <laughs> folks. We can leave this in the podcast because this is all organic and it's a little bit fun. <laughs> but while we're doing this, while we're having technical difficulties, we have a message from one of our sponsors, and I'd like to play it for you. <laughs> Dave, if you don't mind. Okay. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Totally ripping off. Something to wrestle with, I don't even care. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, not that macho man Randy Savage, baby. He can't do an impersonation of the Dusty Rhodes variety. Can we turn the music down? I'm talking, baby. <laughs> I'm here to tell you in the middle of the podcast, the Comic Wrestling Podcast, Daddy, that you gotta check out the Comic Wrestling Podcast. With the Deadly Dave, ooh yeah baby, and the wild card Ass Williams, I mean Ace Williams daddy, ooh, you gotta check them out, they're all sorts of crazy, they get down, they get up, they get in, they get out, check them out, this has been the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, telling you to boogie boogie boogie, where's my Sapphire, hey, where's Sapphire, <laughs> oh Sapphire, <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we uh, we thank Dusty Rhodes for that. Yeah, God, man, you know, Macho Man Dusty. Yo, I got the hookups, bro. I Fuck, I got the legit links. <laughs> um, so back to our regular yeah, broadcasting. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez, Fuck, man. I mean, is that it for Northeast Wrestling? I mean, I mean, kind of. I mean, really, what else can we really? We've said everybody. We've met. We've you know. We've, we've met, met everybody. We said. Yeah. I want, I want to say so, something to Bull Dread for being such a good friend. He's really... His matches have been good. He's, his character has always been good. I, he's, he's always been super nice to us. And, and he's a sexy beast. Thank you. Yeah, he's the sexy beast. He's a sexy beast. Um, Connecticut hardcore icon. I gotta, are you going to... Can you, like... I don't know if the right word is tag people to this shit. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you'll ever listen to this, but it used to upset me when... You would post your mom's delicious foods on Facebooks, and I'm sitting there eating like homemade, or not even homemade macaroni and cheese, box macaroni and cheese, and I'm looking at something like some Stromboli looking thing, and I'm like, mm, I didn't grow up with that lifestyle. That used to upset me because all that Italian food looks so good, and I'm literally eating chicken nuggets that are not even cooked because yeah. I'm a lazy piece of shit. But uh, yeah, he was always a great guy. Like I remember our first interaction with him was standing in line at our very first not our first show but uh wrestle fest 14 and we were walking up that rickety ramp and he was just standing there doing like security yep and i didn't even know he was a wrestler at that point so he chopped me once while we were standing in line it did not hurt and i'll say that it <laughs> did not hurt i look forward to the next chop now <laughs> yeah but he's just always been really really cool to yep. us so i just wanted to mention him you yep. know um, I don't have anybody I'd like to give a personal shout out to in Northeast Wrestling. Like everybody that's always really been genuinely nice to us, welcoming, friendly. Um, someone else that we met was uh, the genius Leaping Lenny. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was at one of the Wrestling Under the Stars. Which was cool. He read a poem, which was neat because, again, that's wrestling. I mean, that was his gimmick in wrestling. Yeah. So I, I thought that was personally cool. We've just met so many people at these shows that sometimes it's hard to remember all of them. And not even like, that's not the point. We're not trying to brag. No, no, met. no. But it's just, we never, when we first started hanging out and going to shows and stuff, and we had our third amigo, um, Mikey Bitchrek. If he ever comes on the show, that's his name, <laughs> Mikey Bitchrek. Um, we, we would. We'd always like, we'd, we'd actually, we'd sit around and play fucking a wrestling board game and watch pay-per-views and... Just, like, think about, like, oh, it'd be so cool to meet this guy or meet this guy. And through Northeast Wrestling, and we're going to go into CTWE in a minute, through those companies, we have really met a good amount of people that we would have loved to have met 
that we never thought we would have. And it was funny we would say it on, and then like, it on the like, way home. Boom, and there they are. Yep. Exactly. Um, and then after somebody would get released from WWE, usually they would be right there. Seriously, you know? exactly. And they would always have TNA people on their shows because they were easier to get because of the schedule and Exactly. Shit, so. Like, we met Abyss yeah. through one of their shows. Um, I always loved having the beautiful people there. Like, having Velvet yep. Sky there was always great. We met Melina. I forgot yep. about Melina. Yep. Yeah, she had a little dog, and her and I talked about a little dog for just like a second. And it's you and Finley dog. bumped shillelaghs? We did. Oh, that was so cool. <laughs> I had my shillelagh. I was standing outside the ring, and Finley comes around all, I will fight ya, you drunken Irish. I beat my wife. That's the Irish stereotype, so I wanted to make sure it was accurate. And I'm, I'm Irish, so I can say these things without <laughs> getting offended. Uh, and I held my shillelagh out there, and we knocked shillelaghs, and it was pretty cool. He's definitely one of the ones because he was so behind the scenes at WWE that I never. As soon as I knew he was, oh, I was excited yeah. as shit when I found out uh, Finley because he just. I can't say he was one of my favorites as a kid because I never watched WCW, right. but when they started it in like oh four oh five doing his vignettes of him like standing in front of like a castle in Ireland, and they would show. I don't even really know what the the effects were but just like the cool videos they would do for him and he's like i'm coming and i love to fight i had no clue who this guy was yeah all i knew was these are my thoughts this guy looks too old to be doing this but this guy's gonna be a badass and learning who finley was after fight like watching his matches and knowing uh fit finley from wcw with his matches with steven regal yeah william regal Re it's just like Wow, why was this guy never brought in way sooner? Yeah. Or, I don't even know. Just love it. I love Finley. And for me, seeing him in WCW, and then never thinking that they would bring him, you know, I yeah, knew he was behind of... the scenes in WWE, but never thinking that they would use him as an on-screen character is fucking great. And it is great, and he's, he's trained a lot of crap of kids today. Yeah. He mainly was, like, the trainer for a lot of the women wrestlers, mm -hmm. too. I think he still is, actually. He's great. He's absolutely great. Finley's awesome. His match with JBL at WrestleMania 24, man, when he fucking dove out of that ring, got smashed in the face with a trash can lit, I almost fucking died. When JBL threw the trash can at Hornswoggle. Oh, <laughs> so funny. It was so funny. I loved it. But, yeah. Have we met Hornswoggle through Northeast? Yeah, we have. Yeah. Yep. He was at the Wrestling Under the Stars yep. the one time. Yep. Yep. Yeah, because I got the picture signed of him in the Muppets. Yeah. That's right. Because he was in the Muppets 2 movie. Yep. With Ray Liotta, which is just weird to see Hornswoggle in a scene with Ray Liotta. Yeah. And Danny Trejo. Like, this, is, what kind of fucking <laughs> misfit world is this? Um, we will continue to go to Northeast Wrestling shows when we can. When we can. Yep. Life has gotten the best of us. We really can't afford to go as much as we were. And it seems like it's always the most inopportune time. Like, it does. You know, it really does. It does. Um, it's allowed us to travel. Yeah. All not, I wouldn't say all over, but to areas that I really would never ex plan on going to uh, for, for any reason. I mean, Jesus... Uh, Connecticut constantly, Waterbury, Connecticut, Danbury, Connecticut, yep. uh, Bethany, Connecticut, for some, a couple in yep. Northeast, mm, excuse me, shows, uh, Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie, Liberty, Liberty, uh, Crown Point, no, there was something with the name Point in it, I don't remember, but, um, we, the Wrestling Under the Stars at Dutchess Stadium, you know. Fishkill, New York, yep. exactly. I don't, I don't want to read off a lot of them, <laughs> Newburgh, New York, yeah, Waterbury, Connecticut. Waterbury, Connecticut. <laughs> Dutchess Stadiums. Waterbury, Connecticut. Waterbury, Connecticut. Waterbury, Bethany, Connecticut. Connecticut. Fishkill, New York. Fishkill, New York. Poughkeepsie, New York. Newburgh again. Poughkeepsie. Dutchess Stadium. Dutchess Stadium. Waterbury. 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 We have so many. Port fucking Jarvis. Port That's Jarvis. what I was okay. thinking of. Yeah. Poughkeepsie and Waterbury. you guessed it, Waterbury. <laughs> Danbury was mostly the CTWE shows. Yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah. Which was funny, because there was a wrestler in their company called Dan Barry. <laughs> which was just weird. Yeah. Um, but it's allowed us to travel to different places and just give us both reasons to get the fuck out of the house, opposed yeah. to just sitting... And we talk about 
the show on the way and then everything that happened on the way back. That's a lie. Well, you'd fall asleep. That's most the, the time. truth. But for the, the first part of the trip home, okay. we talk about. The I would sleep most of it all the time. And then we started going to Popeyes. <laughs> And then, <laughs> yo, we just bought some chicken sandwiches. Chicken sandwich. Chicken just get sandwich. some chicken sandwiches. Nigga, <laughs> like, I know you ain't got no chicken sandwiches. <laughs> That's a whole thing. I think we added it in, that, in a podcast at one point. Yeah. We said that previously. Yep. Um, yeah, but we will continue to go to Northeast Wrestling shows when we can and when, when it's available. I wish they'd come up here again. That'd really. be cool. Yeah. But, but on, on that... Jump right into we can jump right the, in the, the wonderfulness that is CTWE. CTWE. Our first show at the Bethany Town Hall, which is a great building for a fucking wrestling it, it show. It really is. Um, was the four-year anniversary show. The main event was Brian Kendrick against Billy Gunn. That's true. Billy Gunn yeah. was the man. He was fuck. It was great. Um, it was also Sasha Banks's first. Her last independent show before she went to FCW. Mercedes KV? Yep. Right. And in that match, she wrestled Ivy Fit, and Frankie Arion was the referee, and beat the fuck out of both of them with steel chairs. Be like, both women. Unmercifully. Yeah. Like, he killed them. And it was, it was, and we had never heard of him or anything, and just, just to see that was, was fucking great. But that building, we were waiting outside, and. We had, we had never been there. I had, nope. been, I had gone to one. Yeah, I had never that. been there. But yeah, because I remember you telling me it's a small little arena, like, building. Um, there's, like, a fat, out-of-shape Elijah Burke guy. <laughs> the Mac. Which, come on, he kind of was. But he was great. Uh, he's there's great. a big, fat... This is basically the way you said it. Big, fat, like, Vader... Or not Vader. Viscera-style guy with... with uh, Vlad, yeah, because you knew you know the kind of guys I like, and I think that's <laughs> the selling point. Like you, that yep. and I was like, oh man, all right, that sounds kind of cool, man. I'm, I'm I'm down, and I gotta say, it's like was the most professionally put together independent show I've personally been to. And no knock to Northeast Wrestling, you no know knock I mean? to but, them, yeah. But these guys legit knew what they had and used it to the full effect. They knew the arena, the building they were in was small. So what did they do? Well, if we're going to make a small little building, let's make it awesome. Let's have it as accessible as possible, where everything feels inviting. You feel like you are literally part of the show. Let's use the, use the, the, the stage, make our actual ramp, have entrance videos, have our banners and shit. Let's actually have video packages yeah. and music and just... Promo promo videos before the show setting up the up. show. Yep. It just was awesome. I miss that, and it, it got our foot in the door. Yeah, and thanks to Joey Bricko for setting you know that company up, and mm -hmm. you know. But we met guys like Mikey Chase who came out to the Justin Bieber music, and mm, I couldn't remember his name. You know, day. Julian Starr, high five, ugly. Dan Deman. Dan Deman. Yep. AJ Cruz. Yep. The, just the small. I don't want to say Rey Mysterio, but that stature. Cruiserweight. Yeah, just small guy, but had such great matches, especially with Dan Deman. Yep. Pinky Sanchez. Oh, man, the I sexual can Dan Deman monkey. and him, fucking the chops. Yep. To fucking Cruz, like oh my god, uh, Chris and Ant Battle. Yep. Um, the Mac, the Mac was the Mac a Slick Wagner cool. Brown. I always I enjoyed Slick Wagner. I thought Brown. he was great. Bobby Ocean. Bobby Ocean, yep. He's smiling. <laughs> the Monarchy, William King and Zachary Pierre Beaulieu. Yep. Uh, Ricky. Ricky Reyes. Ricky Reyes, who went on to be uh, Castro Cortez mm -hmm. in uh, Lucha Underground. Dave Cole and Jay Busta. Yep. Bandito Junior. Alex Cipher. Yep. Um, Lucas Sharp, the blinkingest motherfucker on the planet. <laughs> Brian Fury. Yep. Nocturne, who was with oh, Ant yeah, Battle, was yeah. Death Proof when we first started yep. going. Um, yeah, the Battle Brothers, Red Lion, Chris Battle, Ant Battle, Showtime, Stevie Stamos. I, I love it. <laughs> but I, I liked Brian Fury. I thought Brian Fury was, was really I cool. thought he was, like, yeah. legit gonna be skyrocket. And, uh, Anthony Green, who started out as the ref. As the ref. But he, uh... He's actually in Evolve now, and uh, he was on a special that the WWE did on Evolve. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah, he actually wrestled on that. Well, we got to mention through this, we met two young individuals. We don't really, we don't talk to him. I don't talk to him at all anymore. AJ Ramirez, 
and AJ Bernardo. Who is now Zane Bernardo as part of a tag team. I wish I could finish this sentence for you. Cut me I'm off. sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to go there, but you know, <laughs> Dave's got to steal the thunder, so I'll let him take the reins. Mark Sherman and Scotty Slade. I like Mark Team Sherman friendship. A lot. With the golden tag rope that mm-hmm. the fans gave him. The fans were so into that product. I loved going to the Bethany shows. It was, the, the atmosphere was unlike anything we've ever been to, Very really. true. You know, I mean, and the chants didn't take away from the show like they do so often. No, now. they, it, nobody was in there, well, the one lady, the tattoo lady. Yeah, well, she was. She a, needed to leave when they finally made her leave. Yeah. But other than that, it was never like, oh, man. It, it always seemed like it was the same crowd yep every time that went to this and it was just the best it was the best and us not being from that area they still accepted us you yeah know, they as were, part of that they were letting you know, us into the building like yeah i look back at it now and I, I don't look at it as like pissy but it was like i was doing stupid shit they, they, they were getting pulling, free help it was like pulling staples out of a fucking wall but it was like i didn't care it was the first chance to set up a wrestling ring. We got exactly. to help set up the ring in the steel cage at Bricklemania. Yup. That was the first match of the night. Exactly. Like, we were literally the boys. We were part yeah. of the boys. Like, it, the wrestlers were coming up after a while. They knew who we were. Yep. And it was just, it was fantastic. It really was and fantastic. Every single person introduced themselves to us. Yep. Not, not knowing what we were there for. Every wrestler, yep. you know. Even and guys like Bobby Lashley were. You know? Oh, man, that was so cool to have met Bobby Lashley at CTWE. I, oh, man, this is just one of my favorite stories because it's just so odd. We're, we're setting up the steel cage. Who did Bobby Lashley wrestle? Um, I want to say Bull Dread that night. I don't even remember. But there was a steel cage match, and Bobby Lashley, you know, the almighty Bobby Lashley was there. Now, I was not a huge fan of Bobby Lashley, even at this time. I was not... I'm mean, I'm huge into him now. I'm fucking yeah. huge into the dude. But at that time, I was like, ah, oh, so-so. But it was still like, man, that's Bobby Lashley. Like, how fucking cool is that? So he's standing over there all by himself, looking, watching everybody set up the wrestling uh, ring and doing the steel cage. And I stopped doing it. And I just walk over to him. And he's just standing there all big, barrel-chested and huge-armed and fucking inflated. And I just stand there and I just cross my arms like I'm a fucking cool guy just stand next you are to though you are i in that moment i owned it i really own that shit walk up standing next to him and we're just standing there like buddies and i go a little bit different than the ring you uh you jump through <laughs> isn't it oh yeah this doesn't look good <laughs> like yeah all right man that's so cool man but even that that was one of the best cages we've ever seen at an indie show though. that's saying something most of the time they got fucking people on the outside of the cage holding the yep. cage up yeah and that was an eye pay-per-view too that show yeah it was yep. that's true a lot of fun i had i missed those shows yeah homicide yep the bellas um rhino yeah rhino yep um, Going to I mean, Ken's cards. Yeah, How can Ken's, we not? We cannot mention CTWE without not mentioning Ken's cards. Met a lot. Met a lot of the people we met before the show was, at Ken's cards. Yep. And even that cool little hobby shop that it was. Uh, I know he ripped me off, but I still, <laughs> I still like the store. Um, and we would always go to the same pizza place to mm-hmm. eat before the show. He'd down get there. mozzarella sticks. I'd get wings. Yep. We met Dalton Castle at CTWE. Yep. Michael Elgin at CTWE. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Trent I, Beretta. I see he's back with TNA. Yeah. So yep. I was like, holy fuck, where have you been? Yeah. But meeting Rhino, well, that was really cool. That, that was, was cool. He he liked our shirts that we had made up. Yep. Because they were in the red and white ECW style, and it just said gore, gore, gore. Yeah, like the Daniel Bryan, yes, yes, yes shirts. Yep. yep. So he liked those. Which he I said he was going to cool. steal it, too. Which I think he yeah. did. I think he, yeah, I think he I think did. he did. Yep. He's back with TNA now. Yeah. Which is like, what the fuck? Like, how, how do you not, like... How do you just keep jumping back and forth to companies like yeah. that? He's How like would, a guy that got released the ra- under the radar. Yeah, like way under the radar. That It was even going to help set up chairs and to help mm-hmm. set up the ring. You knew that we were just helping, to, but it felt like you were part of it. And right. I've, I've said it before where people say, well, doesn't that make you like it less? No. I like it even more. Right, because now I feel like I'm part of the world I love. And I'm giving, and I know this is going to sound dumb, but even us setting up the chairs, that's the same thing the boys are going to be doing. Yep. So, 
I felt like I am part of the entertainment. I am helping this show so when people come in to watch it, even though they're not thinking about who set the chairs up, there's chairs for these people to sit in to now watch a show that we all came to see. Yep. And it just made me feel like gratified, like just doing the littlest thing. I know it added to the final outcome of what we were all there for. Yeah. And it just was, it was so gratifying. I just don't know how else to say it. And it was nice to see Northeast wrestling guys like Zombie and Dread and Brian Anthony come into it and know that they were actually part of that company before we even knew mm -hmm. of the company, you know? Right, because Northeast Wrestling bought out CTWE. At their last show. At their last show. And it was cool to know that they were going to continue to use a lot of the guys. I mean, like, AJ Cruz and Dan DeMann only stayed for a little while. Right. It was, it was really cool to see. And when we used to go to the CTWE shows, they never recorded them on DVD, so we don't have any of those. They're up on YouTube. The stuff is up right. on YouTube. Um... The only videos I think that are blocked are the ones that have Bricko in them. Oh, really? Yeah. They're okay. made just private videos. So. Oh, okay. Um, but that Bethany Town Hall is literally my bingo hall. Yeah. That is my It's ECW a rec center. It was arena. Really, yeah. Exactly. Yep. It really was because Aunt Battle was the guy that worked at that rec yep. school or whatever it was. And they rented it out to him. And he's a huge guy that can do a fucking moonsault off the top rope. He's so talented. I love big wrestlers. I love big wrestlers that can move. Viscera, oh my god, I wish I could have met you, you talented bitch. Like, god, I miss him. I love big dudes like Ant Battle. That He can go for being such a big dude, he's got a gas tank that's always on full. Yep. Like... I just, I love it. I did. And I, really I, I liked it. Vlad at the beginning, but then once I started seeing his shit on Facebook, I was just like, but being you know a Cena mark. It, yeah, I was like, dude, me. I'm done. Yep. You know, a total WWE mark. They could do no wrong. And yep. I was like, yeah, I'm done. I do miss it. I really do. But it's cool, though, because Northeast Wrestling, I'm sure that they've done a bunch now, but they did a show in Bethany Town Hall called The Sure Thing, where yep. it was Mark Sherman against. Matt Taven for the Northeast Wrestling World title. And it's crazy to think that that was in... Wasn't that in 2016? 2015. 15. Wow, it's been that long since we've been there. Damn. But, this is the only DVD I have that takes place inside of that building. Yeah. Which is absolutely awesome. They do run it all the time, still, but... But it's just so cool, yeah. because of the CTWE, yeah. not being able to have any video footage of that building... To at least have this. Um, and you can see us in that one, too. We're, like, third yep. row. Yep. Yep. And I stopped bringing signs after a while and stuff. To so this, but, anyways, because yeah. it was so small. Certain things, like, if you can see you're watching the video, without any explanation, we have got to be given none on this. <laughs> this is a Simba head, clearly. There was a wrestler. Well, there is a wrestler. Chris Battle. Who was one of my favorites, too. I always he really is. I, on good matches. I took his picture down. I had the gold dust picture that he drew. I bought off of him, and I used to have it hanging up, and I took it down. But there was, I don't know what you want to call them. I'm going to call them the hecklers. Yeah. Like three or four guys that would always come to the show, always sit front row. These are the guys you want to heckle the wrestlers. These are the guys that are going to get everybody involved. They're the guys that are going to get the wrestlers having fun and giving the crowd shit to play off of. And doesn't take away from the show Doesn't at take all. away from the show. They're not there to steal the spotlight. They're there because they know they're going to add to it for the positive of it. Um, so these like three or four guys would always, always come to the show and they would bring Simba signs. Simba's head. I have one in my daughter's room where it just says Simba in yellow and red le uh, lettering. And they would hand them out to the crowd. Yep. And this was to uh, get over on Chris Battle, who was the Red Lion. They called him Simba. They called him they Simba. They would sing, uh, Can You Feel the Love Tonight during his match. Exactly. Just to piss him off. And you could tell he loved it. He loved Yeah. Loved it. When Dalton Castle was there, they made signs with the peacock feathers on them. Right. Exactly. Um, just a great, great environment. There's not a single negative thing I could say. Nothing negative I can say about. Yeah, it, it was it was a it was like a family atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that's the way you felt at the ECW arena. Yes, it just you felt a part of every bit of it. Yep, yep. It, I miss it. I do. I, do. I, I miss 
I miss that shit. I really do. We couldn't wait for every single show. Like it, yep. it was just even standing in line. Like I didn't even care about standing in line to those shows. Mm -hmm. Like it just it, I would the because anticipation you knew the payoff was going to be yeah. worth it. Whatever was coming, you knew was going to be worth it. Yep. And it it does make me sad because it was like that was like if I could have stayed in that fucking life consistently forever I would have been like I don't even need to wrestle or nothing I'll just do this yeah I'll just be a ring guy and help these guys out uh, unfortunately that's not the way it works <laughs> but because I do I, I really enjoy doing that shit I remember coming home and just like thinking about it like after a couple of days of like man like not again not that I need the gratification but like when when you and I posted on Facebook after a show like we want to thank everybody that was involved blah 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 I would think, like, man, when people are saying, I want to thank everybody involved, like, I'm part of that now. I'm part of something somebody loved. Yep. And it just, I I guess I've been hankering to have that kind of... And, uh, and like you were saying about the DVDs, I wish they had done them, because I remember going to Northeast Wrestling and getting the sh the DVD from the show that we, we had just, just gone to. previously out. To, to, to get that to go at CTWE would have been great, too. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, fuck, I was just at this one, and now I've got the DVD for we, it. We know? literally used to go, like, out of our way to make sure we got the DVD from the last show we yep. were at. Yeah. And that's, that's basically these. Yeah. These are... There's one DVD in here that I had that I was not at, and I only got it because... It was the Kevin Steen one. Yeah. I wanted that one on DVD to know just to have a Kevin Steen Northeast Wrestling match. But uh, every one of these shows we've been to. And then there's more that we've been to. There's probably like three of them that I don't have on DVD that we yeah. went to. Uh, I, do, I, I wish it was around. I really do. It I was, do too. It was, it was so much fun. And uh, Steven went to one with us. and Steven went to a couple of them. Uh, and that other kid, what, James? Yeah, James, he went to one. That, yep. I think he went to the one with the Bellas. Yep. Right after they had left. And that was cool, because they came out and, like, turned on Anthony Green and shit. And right. They had storylines. I mean, Northeast Wrestling did to a point, but this company had fucking defined storylines yeah, for everybody on the card. Yep. And the stuff with Frankie Arion and Joey Bricko, like, we had no idea about the, the history of that. But just what we saw, we could get... It was so you know, engulfing. Yeah. It was so hard not to be like, what the fuck is coming next? It's like, they literally, correct me if I'm wrong, they would come out and announce that this is a family-friendly show. Yeah. And then at the end of the night, they would do, like, a Frankie Arion match and say, this portion of the show is not family-friendly. Yeah. And people, some people would leave. Exactly. Because yep. it wouldn't become family-friendly at that point. I mean... It would. It would still stay in the confines of wrestling, but it wasn't PG. Yeah, a lot of the stuff that he would say and do and, you know... Was what wrestling fans wanted to hear and yep. see, though. Um, which even made it more, like, taboo-ish. Yeah. Which is like, oh shit, like... Uns like, kind of like how AEW does their unsanctioned lights out shit. Yeah. It's like, the show was great, but I know the ending is gonna be really great yeah. that's how it felt at times it was just so awesome i would have to say dan demand is probably my favorite out of everybody there really. he was the but one of the best heels i've ever seen that's not somewhere right now and he should be he was so good on the mic and just he had heat he had heat with that crowd he really did it was and the team shazam stuff like that you're gonna show it's just you want to just steal my thunder yeah, again yeah god damn people Trying to, trying to be cool and creative, and he just wants to I'm steal it out from under me. This was Team Shazam. It fell right on my knee. <laughs> yeah, he was the leader of Team Shazam. Big comic book nut. Um, I I really enjoyed Dan Demand. I really did. And, and seeing his matches with him and AJ Cruz were just awesome, because it was... They looked so ridiculous fighting each other. Like this weird-looking black dude and this little white car salesman. Yeah. Like, I loved it, though. I really did. I loved when AJ Cruz is, like, we're, we're sitting there next to AJ Cruz's wife and kid. He's getting the shit kicked out of him. And they're reacting to it like they don't know. Yeah. Like how Mick Foley's wife and kid acted when he was getting the shit kicked out of him by the rock of, like, <gasps> shield your eyes, children! And it was just like, this is awesome. Like, yep. this is so cool. And... They're the only indie company I've ever seen that had trading cards. It, it was cool that, that they do have trading cards. And I am on one of them, 
And I no, think you're uh, Mike Starr. This is Julian Starr. Or Julian Starr. High five, ugly. Nice, nice. But yeah, th- I got the whole set too. I, right. I think you did too, didn't you? I don't remember. Them? I don't know. But it, just the fact that when they they released the trading cards, I was like, this is fucking legit. Like exactly. this is legit. Well, you can't say that because Dynasty has trading cards. Yeah. I mean, not saying you can't say they're legit, right? But to say they're the only company, I mean, I personally that we know of, I can only say Dynasty and those guys. Yeah. I mean, Northeast Wrestling for as long as they've been around and doing their thing, they have no merch like that for their just name. their T-shirts for their shows, yeah. Right, but God, I do. I miss CTWE. Is that how long we've been recording on this one? No. Oh, I started it again. Just I, I did like a little. Like, oh, okay. Like, I'm like, wow, we've been doing it for almost three hours on just <laughs> this. No fucking way. But just we had no idea who any of these guys were. None. No, and it was you my know? first dabble into independent wrestling, which I still consider independent wrestling is still territory wrestling. Yeah. I don't understand how when people shit on indie wrestling, it's still territory. And you can go like to World of Hurt. And that guy will wrestle as a baby face up there. And he'll go to a Northeast Wrestling show and he'll be a heel. Uh-huh. You know? And it works. Because there the were crowd's... so many times I'm sitting, thinking of Lucas Sharp. Yeah. From going from CTWE where he was a good guy to Northeast Wrestling where he was a bad guy. And the only difference that he would change from being a good guy to a bad guy, he'd still do the... Oh, I don't know how to do it anymore. <laughs> it's 203. How do you do it? I, I never could do it. His hands. I don't remember how to do it. But the only thing he'd come out to make him a bad guy is he'd have a blue. Yeah. One of them blue like e-cigarettes. Yep. That that's the only way you know he was a bad guy. Yep. Oh, he's smoking. He's bad guy now. <laughs> but I I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I wish we could have seen Kurt Adonis more. Yeah. Because I always enjoyed him. He was he was a really good Jim Cornette kind of, you know, over the Tongue top. Tongue cheek yeah. and real like douchebag demeanor but you loved it because i think he was a big part of ctwe too like, oh yeah just the way you could see they treated him when he came just his return yep just, not even to wrestling just his return to the ring and they had good commentators uh cc sabathia oh yeah, 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 yeah. i can't fuck i'm, I'm I fucking remember, up his name but i do remember and the other guy but it, it just they they had great banter and one was playing the heel mm-hmm. and you know it was i thought it was such a great promotion it really was it really was and you'd eat right in the middle of a fucking, you know, they're, they're thanking their promoters. I'm going to go back to Ken's cards. But it was just so great that nobody, when they would say Ken's cards and then everybody, Ken's cards, like, yep. it was just like, that was just like, how do you know how to, you could do that? You just didn't, people just did that and it was okay. Yeah. I was just, I don't, I don't know. I miss it a lot. It was a lot of fun. It, it was, it was so great. It, mm-hmm. And I, I love Northeast Wrestling too, but CT, the the experience at CTWE is what I'll never forget. Exactly. And and you can go and watch their shows on YouTube, and I would suggest it because the stuff is really really good. I mean, because you're going to see people like we've already named them off, like Mark Sherman and Scotty Slade and and Jimmy Preston. Oh, Preston! I I was oh, I loved him. Preston. Boom! Yep. <laughs> I I thought he was a great heel. And you'll see Antonio Thomas, who was part of the heartthrobs with Romeo Rosalie. Yep. Just slick Wagner Brown. <laughs> like, if you can't enjoy his... I liked him. He was, he was great. If you, honestly, if you can't enjoy Bobby Ocean... Yeah. That dude is talent. I always enjoyed him. I thought he was great. He reminded me of a better Shelton Benjamin. Yeah. And he smiled. <laughs> but... Other than and that, he was trying to keep a straight face the right. whole time. That And that was like a thing, like a weird gimmick that he wasn't doing, but the fans created it. Because this guy would come out... As a baby face, but just a stoned baby face. Like, he didn't have really a personality, but that's what made him cool. And then the crowd would start doing things to try to get him to they smile. They would sing Billy, Billy Ocean songs. Right. You know? And then he would look at the crowd and just... And he would, like, try to stop. bury... He would bury his face in the fucking turnbuckle it was to try great. not to smile. It was so great. It was such a family-oriented event. It really was. Oh, man, it was awesome. The one event I remember a lot is the when Northeast Wrestling invaded CTWE, mm-hmm. and they start, Brian Anthony started coming in, and, you know, stuff. I thought that was a really cool show, too. They should have run with that way more. Yeah. And the, the, when we found out that it was it was over, you know, at the, the last show, it kind of sucked, but got to see Jar- Johnny Gargano wrestle at that mm-hmm. show. Nash yep. and Bull Dread 
tagged at that show. Yep. Um, Derek Bateman, who EC3 was, EC3. At, was at that one. I Rhino his, wrestled at I that one. I got his wrist tape still. Yep. It, it's just the experiences that just in the short time that we saw that company. Very short yeah. time. And I'm very honored that this shirt still fits me. <laughs> I'm very pleased that I, I bought it when I did because I would have, I don't know, sitting here right now thinking about it, I would have regretted it if I didn't own this shirt. Yeah, I have that one. I, I think I still have the Bricklemania 5 one too. I love this one. I even have, that's not a CTWE one, but he wrestled in CTWE. Uh, oh my God, Jimmy Savage. What was his name? Oh, he was the ladies man. Ultimate ladies man. Yep. I forget what his name was, but it was something savage. I have that shirt because it just looked like an Ultimate Warrior shirt. I thought that was really great. Uh, yeah, I don't know. CTWE was a really awesome company. I miss it. I'm sure a lot of other people miss it. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that crowd misses it, but they keep going to Bethany for the Northeast Wrestling. So. I, and I hope it's still the same kind of vibe there. I hope it yeah. never changed. Because if we ever go back, I want it to just feel like we just stepped out of a time machine. Yeah. And not to be like... Oh, this kind of just tarnished it. Because when we were there for a sure thing, it felt like the Bethany crowd. Yep. It didn't feel like anything but that. And, like, even the girls selling cupcakes are over. Oh, and you they, know, they, they were they're, all they're, so hot. Yeah, they're yelling cupcakes and shit. You know, it just, the crowd, it was... It was we saw best. We saw Bret Hart's brother uh, Smith was there the mm -hmm. one time. Yep. Just there, just standing in the fucking corner watching the show. Yep. It was cool. But... I mean, it was just a small gym, really a gym at a rec center. Yep. And it, I don't know how they fit all those fucking people in there, because it was just... The, and there couldn't have been more than a couple hundred people in there. No, and they time. gave us the best shows they could, without a doubt. They really Do, Doing did. dives and shit and hardcore matches. And, and then you have people like the Mac that come out for some comedic shit, but can also put on a pretty decent match. And it yep. just... Everything was just put out perfectly. The, the the cards were written well. The matches were planned right. I just I remember sitting there watching uh it was before they started letting people in and Die Jack was going over a match. I remember just sitting there watching him like run down the match, like doing it like with his hand just like this and thinking about it. It just it was so cool because I I'm a big Die Jack fan. I like him a lot. So to see him breaking down a match, like I've never really seen that science before. And I heard, I don't remember who he was saying it. It might have been Mikey Webb. I don't remember who he said it to. But he's like, yeah, I'm going to, you're going to like jump out of the ring. I'm going to run up one leg, foot up on the top turnbuckle, and then do like a backflip up out of the ring. And I'm sitting there thinking, that's not going to happen. <laughs> like one, you're way too big. And two, the ceiling is way too low. Like that... Cruiserweights have a hard time doing that. You're not doing that. Right during in the middle of the match, we're sitting next to the doorway. He does it on the far side of the of the ring. Literally just lunges up one foot on the top rope, whoop, and then does a moonsault. Yeah. Right out of the bat, out of the ring, and I'm just like, he fucking said he was gonna do it, and he did it. Like that's amazing. And like, they never kicked us out for that either. They would kick other people out, but they'd let us stay they'd in there. They'd let us stay in there for, for all the little meetings and shit like that. And I remember there was one time there was, like, Q&A. Yep, that's where they, I got the ta the table signed. Right, and they only the let, shirt. like, a small amount of people in. Uh, I remember Vlad asked me, like, like, oh, I know you got questions. I, I don't think, even remember what I asked. I think that them, was but. the first one that Northeast Wrestling took over. Yeah? I think so, yeah. No shit. Yeah, I think so. But I, I loved it. I loved all of it. So thanks to everyone that was ever a part of that, because it was it was the greatest fucking show. It's thanking me right now. <laughs> no, I literally thank everybody. Every name we just dropped, um, and then some. The names we didn't drop, because <laughs> there's probably more. I just you know, but we saw a lot of guys, and and I know there are people that you have no idea who they are, but check it out on YouTube because you'll mm -hmm. be you'll definitely be impressed with what they could do. Exactly, and if you're already fans of some of the guys that are in WWE NXT that we've mentioned go back go look back at some of this shit not just for them but to see what else might be in that wheelhouse that'd be like oh man i didn't know this was there i'm, I'm gonna check this out yeah because i'm not gonna say all of independent wrestling is great i've never seen all of independent wrestling shows we've been to shitty shows <laughs> exactly northeast <laughs> wrestling puts on decent shows they put on great shows 
to me, CTWE put on great shows every single time. I can't say a bad one. Every single time. Um, and it just, again, just I want to thank whoever's listening for providing that as an entertainment. Joey Paradise, Paraday, however you say his last, his real last name. Truly thank you for letting Dave and I become part of the world we love. And, and Ant Battle for opening that door. Because I think he had a lot to do with that, yep. for sure. For sure. I mean, granted, he knew that he was getting help, but still, he let us... He was you know, very... He's like, you guys drive that... You know, you're already here. You right. Know, you Come drive that long. Yep. Exactly. Um, and, and the Mac would always tag us in photos and shit, Yes, too. he would. I miss going there and taking selfies and shit with him. Yep. Because he was so much energy and coming out with the shots. I, mean, I have like, the and, shirt still. The party starter shirt. Yep. White shirt. And I on have the back, it says the Mac... Because I was called Mac for a little while in high school, so I was like, well, that's kind of my shirt. And I'm a bit of a party starter. I have that. And they'd come out with the confetti guns and shit, or the confetti... I, don't know where they are. I had the glasses somewhere still that lit off. I don't know where the fuck they were. But yeah, he was great. I loved it. And even what you would think Ant Battle being that big, like that it wouldn't fit, but he, he was such the a after good fit. Party. Yeah, it was a great fit. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then when he started tagging with his brother and shit, it was, yeah. You know... And to know that Nash tagged with Bull Dread, and we didn't know that was going to happen, that was really fucking cool. And Dread had like a, a self-made NWO shirt and shit. Mm -hmm. Lots, lots. What did say, things. HLA? Or HTA? No, it actually said that he had an NWO. Oh, did it say yep. NWO? I remember him yep. having the HTA one that kind of looked like that. Yeah, the NWO. horns to asses, you yep. know? Yeah. But, but yeah, I mess up. I do. I don't know, you got anything else? <laughs> No, I'm pretty sad. All right, well, then... I mean, I got a specific way I want to end oh, it myself, right. but you can... Well, this this has been the last episode of The Wrestling Ring for 2019, and I, I want to say thank you for, for doing this, because it really has... We've had our times where we've, you know, had stops and starts and mm -hmm. shit, but it's 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 really been a lot of fun to do Yeah, this. to know how long we've actually been doing it. Well, this is like our 36th episode, yeah. something like that. It's like... It's kind of crazy to think, whether anybody listens to it or not, that there's an archive now yeah. of 36 episodes of bullshit talking of us. And, and our friends, too. You like, know, yeah, they, exactly. You know? Like It's very humbling, in a sense, to know like we're out there. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of nice. It's kind of cool. And uh, I love... I love doing this shit. I really do. But I love performing more. I love being in the moment. I love trying to entertain and just be fucking uh, out there in a spaz and have a lot of fun with it. So on that note. <laughs> uh oh. Like, like I'm, I'm walking in the rain right now. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, the Comic Wrestling Podcast brings to you its soon-to-be Comic Wrestling Podcast champions of the world, Deadly Dave, the wild card Ace Williams. We are the Wrestling Ring. We are the Comic Shop. We are the Comic Wrestling Podcast. Check us out in 20. 20. Because if you don't, we've got two words for you. Suck, Suck it! it.